tell you what, mate, I am buzzing for the weigh-in. Can't wait to get this breakfast down, mate, and uh, get to the weigh-in. It's gonna be buzzing. What an event it's gonna be. Music is gonna be playing. Everyone's gonna be in the way. It's gonna be blind. Yeah. And where was that? In uh, the yeah. Repo Dominican Republic. Is there any medicines? No, no, no. Taking any medicines? Tablets? No? No. Does he feel fit to box? Yes. <laughs> Do you feel fit to box? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I'm happy. Let's see how many people will be there. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see how Callum Smith fares in his first venture at light heavyweight. For a lot of us, we've been wondering when that would happen. And, you know, he's, he's in against a solid opponent. Lawrence Acoli is talking about this maybe being his last time at cruiserweight, so he'll be wanting to make a statement. And, of course, the, the top of the bill, as I've been saying, whether you're in Vegas or here in London, gathering around fight week, you know, you, you start with a gut instinct when the fights are first made, and then sometimes you start to waver because you talk to so many people around the fight yeah, during fight true. week that you respect those opinions and you start to think, well, maybe that could happen, this could happen. But my gut instinct right from the beginning was that Joshua, whatever you talk about in terms of skills and tactics and pedigree and class, yep. is just too big. I don't think there's going to be a huge difference on the numbers on the scale. Um, but AJ is the bigger guy. It's just a tremendous fight. Unified world heavyweight champion against undisputed cruiserweight world champion. Usyk looks fearless. We'll see how fearless he is tomorrow night in front of 70,000 Brits. Well, 68 and a few Ukrainians as well. But it's a brilliant fight. You know, bringing big time boxing back. This is another journey. 70,000 or so packed in at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. We were there yesterday. It's going to be something very, very special, isn't it? It is. And we've missed everybody. You know, I think... Um, Leeds was great a couple of weeks ago, 20,000 people. Even having 1,000 people for AJ Pulev last December was incredible. But it really feels like the country's moving forward. Big time sports events are back. And of course, Anthony Joshua's back. And it's a big statement for British boxing on Saturday to say we are back. And I want to thank everybody uh, for coming to Tottenham tomorrow night and everyone who's taken time out of their day today to come down and support the weigh-in because it's great to see people back. Yeah, no, I feel good. I feel, I feel strong. I, feel, I still feel I'm a big 175, so I'm looking forward to refueling and then getting in there tomorrow night and hopefully Put in a good performance. Thank you. Passport. Hello.
correct. Yeah. Yeah. Pills? Yeah. 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 Any allergies to any yeah. of yeah. Any problems with the weight? Any headaches? Problems with your eyes? Very good. Not on the front, so have a listen to your heart pumps. Thank you. Good. Hands are okay. Sanction under the offices of the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge is Mr. Charles Giles. So with seven great fights, we have four title fights, two world title fights, and one unified heavyweight championship of the world. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and bring the fighters up to the stage so they can face the scale and face each other. Our first contest that we're gonna bring up, it's 10 rounds for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Middleweight Championship. And now making his way to the stage, Hassan Bayasangura. And his opponent now making his way to the stage, he is undefeated in his campaign, 12 victories and no defeats. Here is Chris Millie Owsley. 159 and a half for Bayasangara. One sixty bang on for Owsley. One sixty for Millie Owsley. Owsley versus Bayasangara. Ten rounds for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Middleweight Championship. Now making his way to the stage, here is the challenger. He's a southpaw, he is undefeated in his campaign as a professional, yeah. fighting out of London, England, by way of Albania, here is Florian, the Albanian king, Marku. And his opponent now making his way to the stage, he is the defending champion. He is also undefeated in his campaign thus far with a professional record of 19 wins. Defending undefeated IBF international welterweight champion, Maxim Prodan. Prodan. <laughs> We'll use that. I think it'll be it'll be two two three ounces. Yeah, yeah. Half a pound. Yeah. You've got half a pound in your underpants. So I could give it a try. You got time. You got you, you still and then you got two hours after this. Two hours. Two hours. One minute. Okay. Keep it. One forty-seven point four from Florian Marco. One minute. Yeah, we'll do the face off. And then you got two hours. No problem. One point six and three points for the African Maxim Perlman. Face to face, guys. Tomorrow, I'm gonna destroy your face. I couldn't wait this moment. You sent me a private message in Instagram. You're gonna see tomorrow. I'm gonna do to you, to your face. You're gonna see tomorrow. I'm not like other guys. You're gonna. Fighting out of Liverpool, England, and proudly upholding his family's fighting tradition. Here is the youngest of the four fighting Smith brothers, the winner of the Muhammad Ali Trophy, and the former WBA Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Callum Mundo Smith. And now to the scales, ladies and gentlemen, Lenin Castillo. 175, bang on for Castillo, 175 pounds for Lanin Castillo. Also 175 pounds, bang on, 175, bang on for Callum Mundo Smith. And 
and his opponent now making his way to the stage. His young professional record thus far perfect. Three fights with three victories tallied. He fights out of Manchester, England. Here is Campbell, the Hurricane Hatton. 136 bang on for Sonny Martinez. 136 pound for Sonny El Uruguayo Martinez. 136 and three quarters for Campbell Hurricane Hatton. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the challenger. He is undefeated in his campaign. 15 fights. He's tallied 15 victories. 12 of those 15 victories have come by way of knockout. Dylan Brasovich. Fighting out of Hackney, London, England. Saturday night, he'll be making his maiden defense of his world title. Here is the former British, the former Commonwealth, the former European champion, and now standing before you as the reigning, defending, undefeated WBO Cruiserweight champion of the world, Lawrence the Sauce. Challenger Dylan Prasovich. One ninety nine, bang on for the defending world champion. One ninety nine for Lawrence the Sauce Akoli. Tomorrow night we turn another chapter to the ongoing history of the heavyweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, let's meet challenger and champion, bring them to the stage for their official weigh-in. Coming to the stage first, Alexander Uzi. And his opponent, after capturing his Olympic gold in that same Olympic Games here in London, he now has a professional record consisting of 25 fights, 24 victories, 22 big wins by knockout, only one defeat, and that defeat turned into a victory by rematch. He has faced and defeated every man he has ever fought now in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, from London, England and the United Kingdom, the reigning, defending, two-time heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Anthony Joshua.
Yeah, but big win the Warriors here. Yeah, good man. Cheers, man. Thank you, guys. Alexander, yeah, just Alex. Alex. Alexander, just them two. AJ, please. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. AJ. That's for us too, if that's okay. AJ, AJ. 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 Magic, AJ. mate. Yeah, no, no, because that's all they're, they're worried about. They're, all they're worried about is what, what's it's coming. Happen, yeah. What's coming. Not necessarily what they've got, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, does that mean? Yeah, that's you, mate. That's you. Serious off, serious off. Yeah, that's the horse hair one. Yeah, yeah. that's the horse hair one. Yeah, nice gloves. I'm gonna try the other one. The other regular. This is my Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, same, no, it's just two different models. Yeah, it's different models. But this is what he used. Tell right. Vegas, this is what he usually has worn. You remember? Yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. Good, huh? That's not nice. Are you going to identify these as the number two? I can do, yeah, yeah. Okay. But they're definitely number two. Those are definitely number two. They're the only one. Myself, they'll be number two. Don't bring the other one. No, no, I'm not. I'm taking these back oh, to the hotel. Yeah, okay, perfect. Any videos? It's Jacqueline training with Sean later today. Is it? Yeah, finishing. That's a finishing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> best support worker. Um, just learning, you just know. Learning. So it's early days. Yeah. But um, it's good fun. Good why, why, fun why, why epoxy? Yeah. Why epoxy? Because of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my darling. Well done, as well. Nice to meet you. Why? She's saying. Oh. Uh, no, Jackie's saying, honestly, you really are amazing. Oh. Such an incredible person. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so no, thank you so much for a kind word. And this is a surprise for you. When? Today or on my birthday? You can open no. this now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This has taken me three weeks, Jackie's saying, to make for you. Oh, <laughs> me and JJ. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. made it for you. Is it like, how come it's got the bubbles? So, how do you do the bubbles? Uh, basically, it's, it's all 5D been, little like. All been placed together, isn't it? Put it all together. Perfect. Okay, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Now, a little bit of rest, drink, food, and tomorrow I'm enjoying these days. You know, this is my favorite days. And tomorrow is a five day that can't wait to to be in the Tottenham Stadium and to see the crowd to be full of public, full of noise, you know, can't wait. Yeah, it was nice, you heard the Albanians there with the flags also, yeah, with the UK fans. 
We have start uh, start supporting 100%. I'm more ready than ever. You will see tomorrow. You know, I will not disappoint the fans. I know everyone are expecting a beautiful fight, and I will give them that. The, for, for once, the talking's over now, and he's he's going to show that he's not just a talker; he's a fighter as well. And he's going to, I think, it'll be the most exciting fight on the card. And I think he's going to think Prodan's going to bring it. Fryan's definitely going to bring it, and Fryan's going to stop him. So some people get nervous about it. Some people, it's like they they can they, they spar well, but they don't perform well. That's so Florian's born and bred to be on stages like this. All right, welcome back to Matchroom Radio with David Diamante. That is me. I am your host today. And I'll tell you, we have a really special guest, uh, one of the greatest fighters of our generation, a three-division world champion, two-time Olympic gold medalist, Vasily Lomachenko. Great to see you, my friend. Good to see you, too. Yeah. Well, how, hello. How are you feeling? I feel great. Thank you. And your father, he had the vision. I guess he always wanted you to be a fighter. But before he wants you to fight, he wants you to dance, to learn how to dance, yes? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, dancing, but, you know, I never liked it. And uh, he said, hey, if you want to be a great boxer, you need to learn dancing. That's why I danced in uh, two or three years, but it was a national dancing. So <clears throat> this fight this weekend is a big fight. How do you see this fight? You know, for me, it's a very historical moment for Ukrainian boxing. It's a historical moment for all, all fans around the world. And uh, honestly, for me, it's 50-50 because they uh, understand what they need to do in the ring. They are both had a big amateur experience. They are both technical fighters. Uh, I don't know, 50-50. You talk about power. And people gave you the name Nomaschenko yep. because you were stopping everybody. They were, they were quitting. They were quitting. This is at featherweight. Then you go to 130. Then you go to 135. Did you find it hard when you moved up in weight, the power? Did you feel like at 126 you're really hurting guys where at 135 maybe not so much? Or are you still... How did that? How is that as a fighter? Uh, absolutely, it's big different. Of course, it's big different. And uh, one one thirty five, it's a good weight classes for me. Of course, it's more powerful weight. Uh, but we have a lot of big names. We have a lot of top fighters in these weight classes. Sergey Andrich asks you, growing up. Did you, oh, did you have any jobs before you were an amateur boxer? Never, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had a job. Didn't you serve yeah, ice I cream? Sail, no, I sail, I sail ice cream. I, sa huh? I, was selling. I was selling. Yeah. I was, was selling, I was selling ice cream one, one, uh, one year uh, and on a Black Sea. Yeah. And, oh, I never said about this. Yeah. <laughs> I I was selling I was selling newspaper. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've been good. I'm back in training, training hard. Just taking a 20 minute trip up from Rockford, and this is like one of my local places to come. So excited to watch the fight from home tomorrow and enjoy a, a great event. They both turn up in tremendous shape. We can see from the weigh-in today. Um, interesting to see the different weights. Joshua weighing in very light compared to what he's done to before. Usyk is career heaviest, so I'm just interested. To see. I think it's going to go points. I think it's going to be quite a cagey affair to start with. But I think Joshua's just got to go and do what he does best, which is be aggressive, come forward, use his power. I don't think he's going to outbox Usyk for too long. He's got to use his natural strengths as well. Yeah, Tyson messaged uh, my manager Sam and said, uh, is Johnny available for my last week of sparring here in the UK? And I, I jumped to the opportunity. Really nice man, really down to earth. It's good to see a bit of his team as well. And as you said, just another notch on the belt, building that experience that I've got to keep gaining. Yeah, very soon, very soon. I've been informed by Matrim, my managers uh, with S-Jam. I'm ready to go. I'm in the gym, training hard. I'm eating very healthily, and I'm looking to make a statement in front of a good few thousand of my, my supporters when they come down.
nasty. The longer one. The longer one. She's gonna sing the longer one. I can sing it as quick as I, I will be tomorrow, the long one, so you count it. Yeah, it shouldn't be more one. than 130. Yeah, the first one you've done. So the first time you've done it was one minute. Chris is, uh, I believe he's ready for, for, for this event. I mean, this is, it doesn't get any bigger than this. And he understands that this is, this stage is huge. It's a huge stage. What better than to be on the undercard of a Usyk versus Joshua, right? When you work hard in the gym, that's what gives you that confidence, you know? So I believe you win, you win your fights in the gym and that's where he carries himself the way he does. He's a good kid, humble, hardworking. And, uh, you know, he's ready to fight. And we have, we're gonna have a tough task. I mean, we, we got this a Ukrainian boxer that has, a great record, one defeat, fought for the world title before, so uh, this is another uh, great opportunity for him as well, and we're fighting for the WBA inter Intercontinental belt, so it's important, it's important to get back on back, back on the map. Almost definitely, I'll never forget that night, I'll forget it one night, but then at the same time you had a, you know, someone in Andy Riggs that was, you know, obviously this was his second opportunity fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world. He came up short versus Joseph Parker, in his prior fight and that's what not his prior fight i should say but prior to me starting to work with him then after that fight he came in I, we worked together for about a couple years maybe about four or five fights together before we got the opportunity to fight joshua so you know we we, we got it up we had an opportunity to, to to get to know one another there was good chemistry and uh, we had the up we got the opportunity of a lifetime to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world and we made it count you know, we didn't take it lightly. We weren't there for a payday, despite of what some people might say or think. He was very, very well prepared for that fight, and we took advantage of it. We took advantage of the opportunity. What does he have to do? He has to be himself. Look, he's got that amateur pedigree. You know, he's also an Olympic gold medalist and also a former uh, unified or undisputed champion of the world in the cruiserweight division, now moving up to the heavyweight division. He's got to be himself. He's a good counterpuncher. Got a great jab, got a great right hook. Uh, he can fight you on the inside, outside. He, he knows how to adjust, he knows how to make changes. He's a very, very dangerous fighter. And I have to commend uh, Anthony Joshua for taking on this fight because he's fighting the, the, the man that no one else wants to face at this moment in Usyk. And I also believe that he's gonna come out on top. I believe that he's gonna be able to make adjustments, the necessary adjustments to defeat Usyk, it's not going to be easy. I see it going the full distance, and I, but I also see Joshua winning a very close to What's going on? <laughs> Welcome to the home of LeBeau. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before fights, I usually just sit around and watch, watch boxing, you know, like eat, sleep, breathe boxing. But to be honest with you, this energy, everything is like no other. Like, to be honest, like I, I wouldn't mind basing my whole box career up career out in Europe and out in London just because of everything, you know, like just because of the whole atmosphere, the ambiance, everything has been top tier. So I can't, I can't complain. Even the fans, like even the fans at the weigh-ins, like you could barely get a crowd out to Chicago to the fights, but at the weigh-in it's, it's packed out, you know, like it's in front of you. So like, I enjoy every bit of, it. you see, I took my time. I acknowledged everybody. Like I took my time. I enjoyed myself. Like if I like if I not if I win a fight when I win this fight, the world is my oyster. Like literally, like it turns into, it turns into bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, like even you know we talking back and forth with my friends. Like I got friends here that's in the UK that came for the fights, like Super Bowl champions. And you know, like he had to tell me, you know, like embrace this moment because you know once you win this belt and take it back home, the world is yours. Once you win this belt and take it back home. 
the world is yours, you know, like, and this is, I think, it's gonna be the biggest moment of my career. Like I said in the interview past, like, this is not only the biggest fight, this is not only the biggest fight in the the year, this is the biggest moment of my life. Like, one of the biggest moments of my life, besides getting married. Don't forget my wife, she back there. <laughs> but besides getting married, you know what I mean? But like, this is gonna be the biggest moment of my life, one of them. I appreciate you guys. Sweet Caroline. Bye. 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 Bye.